In this video, uh, we will uh, discuss Decian tree classifier. So, it is also a supervised classifier. Uh, Decian tree is also can be used as a regression, okay. that is why it is called CART, C A R T. Okay. Um, check it out what is uh, CART classifier and regression tree, but that is called CART. So, Decian tree can be used as a classifier also. Uh, if you have multiple trees and you put the mean of them it is regression value, but it is a classifier uh, easily to do it. And it is very, very popular and widely used to most of researchers uh, report decision tree because it gives a good result and all of things. And uh, it is one tree, uh, we will talk about what the tree is, a simple um, tree with the root and branches uh, in upside down. But uh, if you one tree that is a decision tree classifier, if a lot of trees uh, instead of one tree I want to construct say 10 trees and uh, pick the best uh, what is the class based on the voting mechanism ensemble classifier method then it is called forest okay it is called random forest algorithm so it is good to go for random forest algorithm also but uh, let us understand what is decision tree classifier in this video so this is a sample um, you know sample decision tree to uh, to see whether a uh, student uh, decides to attend a class or want to skip the class so, so let us see the two decisions like skipping the class or starting the class. If you have an exam, if you have an exam in that particular class today, you will attend the class high probability. Okay. If yes, no exam, that is no, and you make sure this particular course my attendance is compulsory. If it is compulsory, then the must question comes. If my attendance is compulsory, uh, do you have a do you have a recovered percentage of attendance like? Um, I have greater than 70 percentage, then I can skip the class. The student might think, oh, I do not want to attend the class. So, there is no exam today and I and attendance compulsory in this, in this course, but I have already more than 70 percentage, so I can skip the class. Or no, uh, if attendance is not compulsory, it is very simple. So, this, this particular course, I have no exam today, no attendance. Now, it is decision of whether you are feeling sleepy or not, right? I feel sleepy. So, I will skip the class. No, I am not feeling sleepy. I can go, I can attend the class. So, it is all about the mood of the uh, particular child or particular student. So, decision tree classifier is very, uh, uh, very famous just because this is how the humans make decision. Before you go to some particular place, how do you want to go or uh, before you take any buying something, you make a decision whether it is important or not, whether what is the cost and all these things you compare, right? That particular decision tree can be the decision can be uh, made as a tree that is called decision tree. So, since it is intuitive, it is also how we do. So, this become very popular and it is very easy to explain to others also. So, it is a tree upside down, root is in the top and the leaves, leaf nodes are on the bottom, right. So, this is the parent node uh, for these two childs and the two uh, childs have branches, so again two childs and uh, the siblings and again the, they have. Uh, uh, leaf. So, you have to have a leaves only in the last uh, the, the, the last layer, okay? the top layer is a root. So, it can be binary uh, like a yes or no, like uh, skip the class, attend the class or it can be more categorical like um, uh, what is a percentage marks you get out of 4 beans or 5 beans or it can have more than 2 branches, not only 2, it can have multiple things. Okay. It is not just yes or no, this branch also can be binary or by branch also can be categorical uh, threshold or uh, level of splits happens. So, decision tree is upside down tree and the branch can be binary or non-binary, also the leaves, the labels can be binary or categorical variable, that is a parent uh, for each child node and root is the root and uh, there is a leaf node, uh, there is no child for that, that is the last node you want to predict. So, how do you create a decision tree for the given um, uh, given values or the data you collected from the students interaction with the system or something like that? So, the decision tree algorithm is developed uh, in 1986 called ID3, it is ID3 algorithm and uh, most recent algorithms like C4.5 everything has been developed uh, from the ID3 or the variant of that. So, the tree is top down uh, tree and uh, the search algorithm is greedy search algorithm will be used. So, that is you have to search every uh, possible branches, if not go to the next branch, uh, something like that. So, the question here in decision tree is which node to choose as a root node. Suppose um, you, you have to, uh, there are 4 features. So, in the previous example, the feature is having exam. 
how do you choose having exam as a root node, which node to choose as a root node is very important and where to stop, when to stop is like what is the final uh, leaf node, what is when to stop the tree, can it further continue more conditions and more logics, but when to stop it. These two are the key questions in the Tessian tree algorithm, okay. Let us see that in the next video, but before that uh, can you uh, list down the advantages of using Tessian tree, can you list down um, one or two advantages compared to other algorithms you are seeing in this close. So, decision tree is simple and easy to explain to others because I said that uh, this is how humans make decision. So, we can easily explain to others they can relate with the daily decision making. And uh, it can handle both nominal and categorical variable like uh, the values, uh, the past the continuous variable, also the categorical variable like uh, the student passed the exam, mid uh, attendance levels low, high, mid all these things. Which means there is less data pre-processing and also no need to scaling or normalizing the values. Okay. It is also a non-linear classifier, uh, it is not like a regression classifier and the hierarchical structure of the tree is easy to interpret because the path to decision making is traced. So, how the particular decision has been made for each thing can be traced from the root to the leaf and uh, that reduces the amb ambiguity in the, in the user when you look at the uh, decision tree, when you visually look at the decision tree how the particular decision has been made. So, you know you can provide the informed uh, adaptation, informed hint or informed uh, recommendation to the students. Also each feature uh, is uh, considered to make a decision that is also advantage also a disadvantage you know um, only one feature is considered at a time other features not considered but each feature is actually considered to make a decision uh, that is actually advantage. So, in this video we just described what is decision tree and one picture of it and what are the advantages of decision tree. In next video we will talk about how to create a decision tree. Thank you.